Okay, we are live. Did that one for you. We did my job. <laughs> we are live. <laughs> and we are tasting. Mike, tell them what we're tasting today. Yeah, so this is the 2019, the uh, Greener Chardonnay at Apostle Robles. <sighs> Dogs are fighting each other. I feel way too tall. Um, <laughs> I tried to get us both in. And uh, it's a Scout Circle exclusive. Hey, Mom, you have this one, don't you? This is the Chardonnay. Yeah, so this is, we are really looking forward to this one here. Yes. This is going to be very, very fruit forward. I'm, I'm really excited about it. And to pair with it, we're making a crab crusted cod, which is actually one of the first dishes Mike told me about that he was like obsessed with this crab crusted, crab crusted cod. Had yeah, that bonefish, you know? Bonefish grill. He's like Before Kate, right? I wasn't this big, massive <laughs> chef, so. Yeah, so we decided to recreate it like two years later, finally, and Obviously, it was amazing because we've been making it several times since. Yeah, it's really nice. And we drank it, or we ate it. We drank it last week. We ate it last week with the um, resident Pinot Noir, right? And you were like, this would be so good with the Chardonnay. Mm -hmm. So here we are again, yeah. making it for the second time and Absolutely. serving it with Chardonnay. So let's talk about this greeter and then we'll start cooking. Okay. What do you want to talk about with it? So this one, we're excited about this one because we love Paso. So Paso is kind of like an up and coming um, region of California. That's where this one's from. This is the only one that we've found from Scout and Cellar that's Paso. from Paso. So yeah. like we've been like dying to this, try it. This one's pretty cool. It's it's thirteen and a half percent alcohol and it's it's very, very precise with 0. 0.26 yeah. grams per liter. Yeah. You're looking over here. Well no, I'm it's trying to here. I'm trying to shield the It's over here though. You gotta look at the no. camera. <laughs> you're literally looking like it looks like you're looking over at the back. I was trying to shield the lights. You can see it's a scout circle exclusive uh -huh. exclusive. Uh -huh. I can't speak English. Look at the camera. So, <laughs> 0.26 grams per liter of sugar. Super, super low. Um, so this one's got a funny little story. So it says we never met a dog we didn't love. With their wet kisses, wagging tails, and the unconditional way they welcome you with excitement. A dog always knows how to make everyone feel like family. Yes. Yep. So if you're dog lovers, you got to get this wine. You have horrible. to. Yeah, you have to. And really quick, you see the, the picture on the bottle. Yeah. <laughs> and this is actually the, the owner of this company. It's her dog's pit. He's the greeter. Yeah, we got our dog. Here's our little greeter. Yeah, this is like a baby. <laughs> so anyhow, we're super excited to um, give this one a try. Yeah. All right. Now we'll get your house. So the color is really pretty. Just looking at it, I'll go ahead and show you all the color. I'm right on the dogs. It's kind of lighter than I thought it would be. Hey, Tracy, are you cooking with us? Lighter, that looks nice. Yeah, it is a little lighter. It smells very like Sonia Blanqui, it not does. like super buttery. No, it does smell mm. like Sonia Blanqui. And actually, the tasting notes on here say a lot of lemon, a lot of apricot, and honey. I, it smells like a lot honey. of lemon. I smell, I smell honey. a lot of lemon. Oh my and gosh, honey. I'm so excited for this one. I almost accidentally tasted it without You're going to be drinking this a bottle a night and come to fall. So this is a Scout Circle exclusive. So what that means is it's only for wine club members. So if you guys are in the wine club, you should have got it. If you have the mix set, the six bottle mix, I think Ooh. is what they sent it out last month. It was July. Um, and if you're a wine club member and you didn't get it, so if you do all the reds or I don't know, whatever, um, you didn't get it, you can actually order it out of cart. And wine club members, fun okay. reminder, um, this month, you guys, if you are a wine club member, you should have already received it. Um, you get a 10% off coupon uh, that you can use on any order. And if you have not yet joined the wine club, Mike's already sitting down. Um, if you've not yet joined the wine club, why are you sitting? Look at the camera. Because my head's actually in the video I'm now. Reading, I'm reading Tracy's Instead mind. Instead of me standing up like this. Uh, if you've not yet joined the wine club, you can do so anytime in August and you get a 10% off coupon to use on any a la carte order. Amazing. So um, if you guys sign up this week, you'll get it tomorrow. If you sign up next week, you'll get it. A week after. Next Friday. Yeah. Okay. And if you get, I mean, so if you think about it, if you buy a case with that 10%, so you're going to get the 10% from the case originally, and then that extra 10%, you get $20 or 20% off mm -hmm. a case of wine, and, you know, on a $200 order, that's, you no know, an extra 40 Have bucks. Have you tried this one yet? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So if you like buttery Chardonnays, um, I think you would like this. And also. Uh, this um, might be better than the nest. Well, nest is a. Mm, I like The nest is a cab style. Well. Yes, I mean, I'm bonking me. Wow. I will say not to. <laughs> I'm glad we cracked someone up. We tried not to. What? Crack ourselves up too much. She said we cracked her up. <laughs> <laughs> My mom cracks up at us too, right, mom? 
Yeah, she um, loves it. I will say that the Scout Circle exclusive wines are some of the, my favorites. Like, I agree. I think they do that for a reason. Yeah, it makes sense. Um, makes sense. And quick note on the, on the Scout <laughs> Circle, you can, you can just join for $89 if you just want to try it. Hey, Jen! You would love this wine. I yep. told you, this wine's made for you. Yep. So it's not as buttery as like a Kendall Jackson gin. It's a little lighter, but the lemon and the um, yeah, honey. Apricots and honey. Mm -hmm, really yep. comes through. Yeah, this is really, really smooth. Yeah. That's probably the best way I could describe I mean, it. It seems really smooth. And come, this is going to be great, I feel like, in the fall. Yeah. Um, I just feel like, for me... <laughs> I'm such a cracker up. For me, whatever reason, I feel like whites, especially Chardonnays, are better for me in like the fall and winter months. Mm -hmm. I don't know why it's weird. I also like Guinness yeah. beer that time time of year, and I don't like Guinness in the summer. Yeah. Um, and this to me feels like it's gonna be nice and warm, drinking around a campfire. It just uh, I mean, this is like just, it's summertime by the pool. Like what it could be, it? it could be pa patio paper pounders or patio pound whatever it is. Hey, Vicky, I see your little face popping up on there. Huh. Um, patio pounders or paper whatever it, you could drink a whole bottle. Like I, that's how I feel about this wine. Yeah. Like I could drink the whole thing. It's just so smooth. It's so easy. It's crisp. It's fresh. It's got a lot going on, but it's not overly like heavy. So I, I love it. I, I, I love it. Yeah, I, I like it too. This is gonna be really good with this mm -hmm. with this cod. So why don't yeah. we tell them what we're doing with the cod? Okay. Just to kind of, I posted something today um, about you know pairing wines and food and yeah. kind of just some some go to tips for if you know you're just trying to figure it out. And this one here, you know, fish. Hey Jesse. With your Chardonnay, your white wine is a nice classic pairing, and we're looking forward to it. So Jesse, what do you like to drink? What's your favorite wine? We'll have to find you a Scott Cellar yeah. version of it. Better version. Um, okay, yeah, so for this crab crust, I know I want to flip it around. But she, I wants, said, she wants wine. All right, just before we <laughs> make anybody. So much time setting that up, don't. It's, All right, it's fine. very difficult to get it from All right, fine. when we do it. Let me see, just turn it up. So our right kitten down. has been. She's guarding our wine. She lives up there. It's by, so hysterical. By the way, we had to add this extra, we this extra little rack here. She hangs out there all day. She loves it. She loves yeah, it. It's easy enough. I know. Well, it's a small city. So. There we go. Yay. You can see my face finally. Well, no, but we don't want that. We want to see the food. Okay. So yeah. you're the chef. So you're going to have to. I know we it up. Oh, you, well. You're going to have to. Uh, okay. So first ingredient we have is cod. And Mike. Overachiever, he bought like a pound and a half of cod. Um, I would probably say for two people, like three quarters of a pound to one pound. Oh my gosh, she's hunting for her over there. Um, so we are gonna have a lot of leftovers, which is good, unless Mike's super hungry, then we're not. Um, we're gonna have leftovers. So first ingredient is cod. Um, the next ingredient is crab. And yes, so Tracy, one tip, and this is something I share with my one-on-one -on -one clients, is whenever I'm drinking white wine, I always keep water next to me and I keep the water closer than the wine because I'm the same way. Like I could drink, yep. you know, a whole glass. My mom too. Like we would comment, we struggled. She could drink the whole glass and I'm like, ooh, where'd that go? Water's so, a good idea. Yeah, we always I always keep my wine a little further and my water closer. That way I'm drinking water and that's then, a good idea. Yeah. Because it's more of just the act of drinking something yeah. than it is like, you know, just drinking any you know the wine. So he having the water there to be wine. able to drink yeah. Jesse likes sweeter wines. So we're gonna have to find her some low sugar. Um, so some of them they the do have agree. The the that Hushkeeper Pinot Gris is a great one. It's fruity. It's not sweet, though. Right. I mean, as far as the, the sweet stuff, there's really no sweet. I wouldn't describe any of the Scout Cellar wines sweet because they, there's not a lot of sugar in them. They're zero to maybe the two Riesling grams of sugar. Is. Yeah, the Riesling is probably your you know best bet. That's probably the sweetest one that they got. Yeah. I'm going to stick with it. We'll show them this once we get to the too. Okay. Um, cool. Little wine pool. Yeah. Okay, so first ingredient is cod. Second ingredient is crab. And I've tried this with... Um, like the lump expensive crab from the like fish market, fish counter. And it's really honestly better with this stuff. Like the inexpensive, just canned crab. Um, you just want to look for white crab meat. And I'll show you what the texture looks like when it when we open it. But you want it to kind of like adhere to the top of the fish. And I find this stuff does a better job. So this is what we're using there. And then lemon. So all the fresh flavors can come from fresh herbs and lemon. So I've got just a little lemon here. And just to interject really, really quickly, yeah. think about it. This wine's got a lot of Lemon. A lot of lemon in it. Yes. We're okay. going to put lemon in the fish. It, it's going to pair perfectly together. Wine pairing tip of the day. Yep. Um, and then some, yeah, Jesse, we'll put together a list of some ones for you. Um, the Epic Pursuit Spritzers, I think you'd love those. Those are like fruity and sweeter. We just had those, right? Um, mm -hmm. yep. yep. Uh, some of the rosés are really fruity, but of course, getting away from sugar. Your sweet wines, like I think we were looking 30 at 30 grams. Yeah. 30, 30 grams, grams of sugar in a bottle. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, a lot of people say they don't really, you know, it's not a big deal, but 
for me, I don't know if you're a person that gets headaches at all drinking wine. The sugar, the sulfites that are in them, and the added chemicals, they give you, they yeah. give me really bad headaches. And that much sugar, I mean, think about that. A bottle of, yeah. what's a bottle of, you know, like a, like a 16 ounce of Mountain Dew is like, there's like 20 grams of sugar. Yeah. There's 30 grams in a bottle of Moscato. That's insane when I found out about yeah. that. So drinking a two gram of sugar wine, obviously it's not going to be as sweet, but you still get those fruit flavors and it's still, you know, it, it's they're very, very good. So Jesse, I think we could send you some that are going to be fruity, and sometimes once you start to try yeah. a little bit less sweet wine, your palate will shift. Yeah, you realize so. that. Yeah, absolutely. But We've yeah, had a few people on here. I don't know if they're if they're in here with us right now, but there's a few people in here that like the sweeter wines that we have turned yeah. them on to um, the Residence Infidel, mm -hmm. and so they love it. They absolutely love it. Yeah. Original rosé. Original rosé. Um, any of the Sauvignon Blanc. Yep. So, yeah. They absolutely love them. Okay, so then for herbs, we're using fresh parsley and. Yeah, yes, Tracy, I know. I almost fell off my chair when I saw that. Um, and fresh chives. And I typically would use a little more chives, but my chickens ate all the chives. This is all I've got. So, chives. And then we've got panko. So we're going to make a mixture of panko and crab. And if you are gluten-free, just do gluten-free breadcrumbs. That'll be fine. Um, if you can find gluten-free panko, though, I like the texture of that a little bit better. Uh, and then olive oil, Celtic salt, and red pepper flakes. So pretty easy. Uh, so to start, Mike, I'm going to have you zest the lemon into this bowl. Sure. So here's our little oh, zester. And this is my favorite zester ever. I got it at Home Goods. If you guys can see, it has much bigger um, little holes on there. I don't know. I just feel like it's the best thing ever. So if you guys see one, snag it. Let me do this whole, the whole uh -huh. caboodle here. Yep. This is like a normal zester. This needs to. There's lots of things. It's a <laughs> cheese grater. It's not a zester. I don't understand. Another fun tip, my mom loves to do this, is uh, take your lemon and take your knife and peel around your lemon Ooh. and then thinly slice the peel. Ooh. And you'll have these nice, are you zesting your fingernails? No, no, oh. I'm saying that's really, really good when your mom does that. Yeah, you'll have, I told her that. Oh, okay, well. She, she, she shows all these tricks and she pops them little, off as her own. Yeah, okay, only, I see you, Sharon. Only to Mike, it's little so funny. Stinker. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, if you want to try to like really bump up the lemon flavor, we call it the life changing lemon trick. There you go. That's a healthy passion skill. Okay. So, oh, sorry. I'm just gonna. I'm draining the crab off. You just open it, drain it, and then I'm gonna dump it in. No, you're fine. I'm gonna say this is all I'm good for. Oh. I'm a little sous chef. She gives me tasks to do, and I just go ahead and take care of them. Again, he's an overachiever. He does what I say, like. Just a listener. Yeah. Well. Okay, so I'll show you guys the um, texture of this crab. You see, that's really fine. That's what you want. Thank goodness for you, Kate. Oh, I got credit. <laughs> she does love me. Okay, so that is gonna go in. Yeah, you're right. Should have that way. That was not crab. But. Savvy. Okay, so then that's gonna go in, and then we're gonna add probably about equal parts breadcrumbs. So again, Mike got pretty large pieces, so you want to make sure that you have enough topping to coat them. But um, probably about, I would say at least a half cup, probably closer to a cup, gonna go in there. And then you can like, cut that lemon in half. Um, we're gonna add half of the lemon juice as well, just to again kind of flavor things up. I can't see anything right in front of my face. So is anyone else drinking with us or are we drinking alone? I hope you guys are drinking yes. with us. Tell us what you're drinking. Also, um, tell us what wines that you guys want to drink next time and we'll come up with a recipe to go with it. How about that? Yeah, have you seen any that we haven't tried that you want us to try or I did a do the whole up. thing? Yeah, the whole half, yeah. One thing, one wine I'm dying to try is the um, Pinot Grigio. Um, Caifico? Caifico Pinot Grigio yeah. from the wine club. Yeah. Not isn't that, so exclusive. Isn't that one orange? So this one's supposed to be an orange wine. I don't know if you can see the bottle. Um, but it actually comes out. Tracy's drinking champagne. Yay. Let's go. Tracy, you said you loved the uh, Gallivant champagne. Gallivant bubbly. My dad and mom are drinking a Sauvignon Blanc. Look at you two, Let's cutie. Let's go. Okay. <laughs> Day mom, night. did you get your Adelante um, cake that you ordered? And have you tried your Adelante Sauvignon Blanc yet? Question. question. Um, okay, so I'm going to take the herbs and I'm just going to kind of fold them up into a little bunch, a little bundle, a little pouch, and then just kind of run my knife through them. So you want to mix that together and then add about a tablespoon of olive oil. So a good drizzle of olive oil. So we're, we're creating that kind of um, sticky. Mom, I think you're going to love the Adelante Sauvignon Blanc. Agreed. We're creating kind of like a, almost like a crumble that you would create for like a pie. It's a good analogy. Um, so you want it to be a little bit wet because what's going to happen is it's going to um, bake in the oven and you don't want it to dry out. 
and then I'm going to hit the broiler at the very end, and it's going to kind of crisp up. So, um, and my oven's on 425. I cook everything. If you guys are Healthy Passion subscribers, you know everything I do that I can is on 425. I just feel like it's easy. My mom hasn't tried her oven on day one yet. Just tisk. She's in for a treat. You can eyeball it. Well, I don't like the eyeball because sometimes my eyeballs are a little bit too big. So I'm going to go ahead and <laughs> grab a little tablespoon. I'm going to tell you when. Okay, that's good, yeah. Yeah, see, I would have done a, three times then. No. A pinch of Celtic salt and red pepper flakes goes in there as well. That I do know. Pinch, pinch. And then also another trick is whenever you are breading anything, you want to season every layer. So we're actually going to season up the um, fish. Good. So go ahead and same thing on the fish. Probably not as crazy as the red pepper. Right. Um, we're going to season up both the fish and the toppings. So that way the flavor really kind of comes through. Because cod has its own very unique kind of yeah, fish flavor, and you want to make sure you kind of bring that out. I feel like sometimes people take white fish especially, and they smother it with something, and you don't really highlight the flavor of the fish. So one thing I focus on with a healthy passion recipes and this recipe, everything we do is kind of highlighting every single um, ingredient. Yeah, the cod does have a very distinct fish kind of flavor to it. So then I'm going to add, like, I don't know, all of it except for maybe a tiny bit in there. I'm going to save this for some garnish. Um, so maybe, I don't know, three quarters of it. Seven eighths. I know, I'm such a... Go with seven eighths. When I'm not like creating a recipe, I just kind of wing it. But that's what it's going to look like. So you can see it's kind of crumbly. Um, it's going to stick together. So what we're going to do is kind of pack it on there. Um, and you can see kind of the green and the yellow kind of going throughout. Kind of, kind of, kind of. Okay. Okay, why don't you turn the... Um, Lake Crusade as well. Lake Crusade, seven, yeah. six, five. Uh, all the way boil. We're gonna do the broccoli. Got it. So oven preheated. Is there water in here? Uh huh. We're gonna steam our broccoli to go with it. We're just doing a steamed broccoli because that's kind of like restaurant style. And then we're gonna do a caprese. Plus, I love the broccoli steam. Yeah, okay, so then let's go ahead and get the um. In the oven. Yeah. Let's get the fish okay. topped off. So one thing I like to do then is again seasoning every layer. I'm gonna do a drizzle of olive oil over the fish. And this is going to help it dry out because cod doesn't have a lot of fat to help it not dry out. I, I was going to say, yeah. <laughs> cod doesn't have a lot of fat, so I like to make sure I add that fat. Fat helps to um, kind of give more flavor, and then it also helps to actually absorb nutrition. So huh. if you add fat to food, it helps your body absorb the nutrition that you're putting into it better. Interesting. See, I did not know that. And I'll let you do it. So you're just going to kind of like yeah. take your hand. Hands are your best kitchen tool. Um, you're going to kind of take, take your hands and just kind of pat it on there. Kind of form it. It should be um, wet enough that you guys can see it kind of sticks together. It should be wet enough that it'll really. And you've got plenty. Press it on there like a little bit, right? Yeah. Just kind of give it a. Just kind of form it. Go through it. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay. Good. Remember last one we made like the best one. The last one. Yeah, I guess we do have a bunch. I wasn't sure how far it would go, but hey, we got enough. I'm yeah. sending it. I'd probably use about half the breadcrumbs if I had a little less fish, just because I like the, the crab to kind of shine. Yeah. Um, but I also want to make sure we have enough to coat the fish. So we are just going to do that. And then, again, one more drizzle of olive oil over top, just to give that golden brown color. And then I would say this is going to bake about 10 minutes. I am the worst at timing stuff. I like to just set a timer and then check on it, because I, I'm a visual person. So I'm going to probably do it for about 8 to 10 minutes. And then what we'll do is we'll flip on the broiler at the very end and crisp up the top a little bit. The other tip is for this kind of stuff, always line your baking sheet with parchment paper. I find it really helps to kind of make cleanup easy. It makes it so nothing sticks. There's nothing worse than when you cook fish, like, and it sticks to something. Yeah. It just falls apart. And yeah. cod is so delicate and so sensitive to... I've done it. So what I like to do is the parchment, guilty. and then you just take a fish trimmer and right off onto the plate. Absolutely, I'm guilty of that. But it's okay. We love it for trying. Okay. Every last cool. drop is going on here. Good deal. So we'll go ahead and hold this up. I was going to say, I'll show yeah. it to them. Drizzle of olive oil right over top. Kate's a big olive oil drizzler, just so yeah. everybody knows. And again, I'm, I'm careful. I wash my fat, but with this kind of dish, like, there is almost zero fat. Crab doesn't have fat. Bit cod doesn't have fat. So unless, I mean, there's probably two tablespoons of olive oil in the whole thing. Yeah. So it's not crazy. And Those are about, just so you know, that's, these are about a foot long here. So that's a pretty big. Your foot's only about, you have a tiny little foot. It's cute, but tiny. I don't know how he knows that. So you want me to go ahead and toss that's it? That's going to go in the oven. I'm going to set my phone just so we don't forget. <coughs> Bottom or top? Top. Always on the top. When you want something to um, crisp up on the bottom, you put it on the bottom, but we want the nice top. 
Yeah, Tracy, you're gonna have to let me know how it turns out tomorrow. Is she doing it tomorrow? She is. Let's go. Yeah, so I'm gonna set a timer for, we'll say nine minutes just to kind of shoot in the middle. Um, and then Mike's gonna get the broccoli <coughs> up and into the little steamer basket. And then, are you all right? I just inhaled like a piece of pepper. And then I'm gonna take my herbs and kind of set them aside. And let's talk a little bit about some of our favorite. So Mike and I are big wine tool geeks. Like we love our little yeah. wine glasses. We've got gadgets. a wine glass for every wine. Or gadgets, gadgets, gadgets. Sorry, we have a chicken in gadget. gadget. My bad. <laughs> gadgets are chicken. The one in front of you. See, you cough too. Oh, See, some, something got in my throat. It's kind of hot. Mike, don't Sorry. Hmm. We like our wine gadgets. So two things we've been loving lately. And mom, I think you caught me this. Um, what? It's <laughs> spicy. I don't know. I swallowed it though, whatever it was. <laughs> you know what it probably is? I made those hot peppers and I probably. Probably what? Scribbled them everywhere. On the burner? Yep. See? Wow, you actually took. Hey, I didn't get blamed. This is great. Are we recording this? Is everybody. What's the date today? I want to. I want to. I want to note this. <laughs> this is great. Let's use a different burner. Maybe. <coughs> that is funny. I know. That's, That's funny. I, I like this. Yeah, I did, I pickled hot peppers today and I overflowed them. Um, okay, so this is a marble. Yep. Well, Can just get, yeah, I got. We're it. Gonna have to, like, so this is a little, little mar marble. We we'll call it a little cooler. You put your your wine in there. This is fantastic, and you can ask you know Sharon about it. She's in here. Um, 95 degrees, put your cold bottle in there. You could go outside, it really keeps it nice and chilled. Yeah. Um, I'm not going to say that if you bring it out there and it's 50 degrees, it's going to stay 50 degrees for four hours. So you know what I mean? But yeah. it definitely helps it stay um, cooler than it was. And when you add in one of these. Uh, well, my mom puts hers in the fridge too to help keep it even cooler because the marble conducts Ooh, um, cool. So it's, it's a good way if you are entertaining to be able to have white wine out for a little while and not have it in. I don't know about you, but like when people come over, I don't want them in our fridge. We have so much crap in our fridge. Like I want them to be able to enjoy, enjoy the white wines and have it in a, in a designated yeah. space. Mm. So that's the first tool that we love for white wine. And we'll link these, you guys, if you want them. Yeah, we're, um, we'll link yeah. them for you. And the second tool, Mom, we actually sent you one of these today because we love it so much. It's a stainless steel. We had like a... And then so <laughs> plastic one before. Yeah, and this is really cool. You put it in the, in the freezer. Yeah. Okay, you freeze this uh, metal piece. Okay, you put this in. It's got a little little stopper on top, and then it is a, a nice pour that you don't spill anything, and it's an aerator too. Yeah. So you have a younger bottle of wine. You don't want to sit there and decant the whole thing. You could just go ahead and toss this in there, put a little <laughs> oxygen to it, and help help soften those tannins a little bit. So. Um, Younger wines tend to be a little bit more tannic. They need to get a little bit of air out of the soften them up. So. And I was telling my mom this today. We actually love this for white wine, of course, but for red wine, if you um, like pull your red wine out and you want it a little bit cooler, like if we pull something off the rack and yeah. open it up, we'll pour a little bit out. I've done it before where I have it for anything out. I stuck it in and it goes everywhere. Can you turn that down a little? Uh, but if you pour a little bit out first, take a little pinky sip, and then add this in, it'll actually chill the red wine down to the perfect temperature. Yeah, a little bit, yeah. So. Well, it's okay. Nobody needs to see your face as long as they can hear you talking. Look at my t-shirt. It's kind of weird. <laughs> Whatever. Mm. Okay, so oh my God. I love mm. that honey. I taste that honey. Yeah, you're you right. Honey? I was, I was, I do. I do think that I means smell you like. The lemon. I smell the lemon. Yeah. I taste the, the honey. <laughs> I do think someone who likes sweeter wines would like this because that honey is super. Um, Smooth. You really get it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I know. It's pretty funny. <laughs> One time I was making homemade um, hot sauce. Um, Tracy, we got them on Amazon. We'll link them after this. You yeah, can we'll, we buy got the a link. Brand. We got a link coming. Yeah, it was. Really I got cool. bottle opener links coming and and yeah. all sorts of Our stuff. Gosh. So we're working on it. Just bear with us. Um, one time I was making homemade <coughs> hot sauce and I could not breathe and I opened the window to try to like get air and it makes it worse, I guess. Adds oxygen to it. <coughs> I thought I was gonna die. It was definitely the worst. Okay, so for Frase Sal, this is pretty oh, yeah. easy, but we I figured. We'll throw, throw one together for you all while we um, here, so you can assemble. Okay. So we've got tomatoes from our garden, um, fresh basil, and then mozzarella cheese. So we throw some mozzarella. The mozzarella. Is that what does? You hate? <coughs> she does it all the time. <laughs> I try to do it just to make Mike feel uncomfortable. She'll, she'll just be talking normal. 
And then all of a sudden, <laughs> Not me, she'll go, Giada. Yeah, Giada. And then all of a sudden, she'll go, Mozzarella. Or uh, Parmigiano Reggiano. So for our tomatoes, I'm going to slice them into little wedges. I'm not a fan of that. Um, I'm going to slice them into like little slices. We'll top it with a little basil, top it with mozzarella. <laughs> and then, Mike, if you want to show them the um, balsamic that we're using. Hold up. I like to do a little balsamic drizzle. Hold up. What's happening? I'm putting my the things on here. Is that okay? Yeah, we put the tomato first. Oh, fine. Good and then we do half a mozzarella. Sorry. You're afraid to say bye, Mike. Yeah. So you're good. You're good. Fat chunks of mine. <laughs> <laughs> you talk um, about my olive oil. <clears throat> now, why don't you just show them the balsamic? I'll do this. Is this from Portiano? Uh -huh. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wowzers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we did this um, this little private wine tasting with a, a winery from from Porti or from uh, Italy. Italy, Tuscany. And uh, they had this homemade <clears throat> <laughs> balsamic glaze. And they said that they put this on French vanilla ice cream. Mm -hmm. I, I couldn't even believe it when he pulled me it. I bet that'd be so and good. he had us try it, and it's phenomenal. Um, so we bought some. I think this was like what forty bucks for this. It's worth every. I mean, it worth every single penny. So we put it on our we put it on our uh, um, caprese. caprese salads, and okay. we don't use it that much. But we're you guys are getting the good stuff. So. Yep. No, was looking up whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Another good thing is some truffle oil too. I don't know if you've ever had truffle olive oil, but man. Their truffle oil is really good. Yeah. Marciano. All right, maybe one more piece. Okay, it's all right. No, you're good, you're good. I, I was getting wild. You were getting wild. Wild and crazy kids. in the crate? Yeah, she's in the crate. I could let her out if you want. No, but we got the greeter here. And this is such a funny name. The dog, of course, they're little greeters. Every yep. time you walk in the door, you know, all that stuff. Well, the cool thing about Scout and Keller is everything has a story. So yeah. they, that since day one, her dog's been at the office. And that's like her role, <clears throat> the puppy's role as a greeter. Yeah, I got to say, you know, I'm just a little, little bit of honesty here. When we first started this, number one, I didn't know if I was going to, I didn't know I was going to like the wines this much. First of all, but second of all, I didn't, I didn't know how like you know doing this was gonna be. It's so much fun. I love yeah. doing this. I have a blast. We do love it. We love you guys. And we're yeah, so we're thankful. so really appreciate everybody that hangs out in the group and posts in the group and you know and hangs out asks with us. questions, hangs out with us. It's great. Mom says make sure you have Celtic salt. Yes, mother. I'm like, why don't you go ahead and do that? All right. My mom's also a Celtic salt freak. Advocate. Oh, <laughs> advocate freak. We've got some purple basil just for fun, and um, oh, I'm still dying here. I'm not gonna lie, those suppers are hot. <coughs> we got the rum. <laughs> yeah, right. It's manifesting in a very tight chested <laughs> sensation. Yeah. Don't joke about that. <laughs> um, yeah, I want my parents to visit. Okay. I'm gonna get a, a note, an anonymous letter. I know. From my mother saying I'm not coming. Huh. Okay, so those look pretty. So then a little black pepper and then a little drizzle. I've got always, whenever I do raw, so I have like my cooking olive oil. Oh, Tracy, we love you. Oh, uh, Leona, hi, I didn't know you were on here. We love you, there Leona. We go. I know, all my favorite people. I didn't even see she was um, on here. What's up, Leona? Whenever we cook, we have like our cooking olive oil. It's like organic, just plain olive oil from Costco. Obviously, like we buy a well, I know what it is. What? I mean, you cooked. You did those peppers were sitting in this for yeah. the last like five days and now we're boiling water and it's probably cooking all the stuff out the bottom. That's why every time I breathe in that steam, I'm like dying. Anyhow. Sorry. Stop dying. I don't uh, think it's the burner. I think it's the inside of the all right, sorry guys. I know, I'm bad at this. I'm still very new at this. <laughs> and Leona's watching you chill. I'm still very new at this. It's gonna be worth it though. I canned a ton of hot peppers. Yeah, they're they're ridiculous. Oh my gosh. Guys. All Italian <clears throat> hot peppers. Um, okay, so anyway. Whenever I cook, I use like a basic, just plain old olive oil. Whenever we do raw, like salads or like this, I always recommend doing a high quality, um, like finishing oil. So this is a little bit more expensive, but again, a little bit goes a long way. The flavor is just insane. Like this, I mean, that's perfect on that balsamic. Yeah, no, that's not just, crazy. No, I'm not going. I'm not telling you that. Oh, oh, sorry. Jeez. Sorry. I thought it did a good job. It looks cute. Okay, so then we are going to check our fish. It's been about nine minutes and it should be looking pretty good. Okay, no, so that is that. perfect. So I'm just going to broil it until it's brown. So what you want to look for is you want your fish to be cooked through for the most part. Again, it, you don't have to be overcooked. If it's falling apart, it's too long. Um, but you want to, I think that part is done. <laughs> I think we can live with it. <laughs> I think we're going to die. We don't, 
Hello, hello, more people popping on. What's everyone drinking? Liana, are you drinking anything tonight? <coughs> Viva How do you say your name? Vivana? Vivana? It's a beautiful name. Liana says, you're both inspiring. I did my first video recording for work today with one of my out of the box things to do. Yeah, girl, <laughs> that's amazing. You're good on video though. Whenever we've Zoomed, I'm always like, you, you can tell you're natural. You're really comfortable. A lot oh. of people aren't comfortable on video. Like, were you comfortable on video the first time? You no, I wasn't. You had me doing these tastings, and I'm like, man, there's You've this come is, a long way. What did we do when, with like AHP? I hopped on there or something. We did um, meatballs. Meatballs. That's and healthy what carbs. Like, name my healthy carbs. Like, you really I had to make sure my outfit was okay. I'm like, oh my gosh, the, uh, you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm putting myself out there for the world to see. It's got to be. <laughs> It was only a joke. It's it a like, private Facebook Yeah, group. it was pretty funny though. Of 13,000 women. The bookbinder or bookbinder's apprentice? She's drinking the bookbinder <clears throat> apprentice. I set Leona up with a tasting and when she gets her friends to buy the wine, she's going to get the bookbinder at a discount. Leona, let's go. Yeah. yeah. If you do it within a month, right? No, it's, it's whenever. Oh, okay, yeah, nice. Tasting lasts. Oh, okay. Yep. Sweet. Okay, so we should probably stop staring at each other for that. Right? I don't want to stop staring at you, Katie. <laughs> Okay, so we're going to let it go a couple more seconds. Um, we're going to put a baggie, put the um, throw in the baggie. So what questions do you guys have? Any, yeah, any questions, questions on wine club, this wine? <coughs> Leona, you're a wine club member, so you can order this um, greeter. I know you're not a big white drinker, but I, I this might be... I it's better know. than the Gallivant. I like I like it better than the Gallivant. Yeah, it's it's not. Like <laughs> and that was one of my favorite. You know, that was one of my favorite ones. The Gallivant's a little bit more buttery. That's your like traditional California. Yes, yeah, Tracy's drink. working on a wine group too, so she's she's got a tasting set up just for it. her friends and get some Tracy. I, I think bookbinder. Tracy and and Leona. I think what we're gonna do, or anybody on here. Whenever y'all get your. I think we're gonna do a virtual actual tasting with like. A yeah. Zoom meeting tasting where everybody, you know, you get a bottle and we want to hear what everybody thinks of it and how you guys are interpreting, you know, every every glass. And, yeah. Um, we're gonna set, you know, we're gonna be posting something like that. I think it'd be really, really fun. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you both of you guys, when you close out your tasting and you get your discount, um, bookbinder, bookbinder. It's not that hot. All right, I can show everybody. This is what it looks like. Yeah, that's amazing. Look at that. Gorgeous, gorgeous. I feel like you could feed like. Yeah, it would be fun. Yeah, Sharon, definitely. Tracy and Leona, I wish you all lived here. My mom has a book finder. You haven't tried it. Oh, yeah, you drank it with us, too. You know? Oh, she did. Sn sneaky roommate. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I call our animals that all the time. <laughs> our sneaky roommates. That's funny. Look at you. <laughs> Taking funny stuff from me. You I don't know if you can see funny. this. I'm going to put this here. We'll try and do it, but there's a little... Uh, all right, so what, mm. before we dig in, what questions? Come to Florida. We what, we should meet in Key West. We all know when all this craziness goes away. We uh, we go down to Key West a ton. Mom, Leona loves uh, Key West. My mom and dad love Key West, too. We have a bunch of family down there. <coughs> My parents spent At. a while in the winter. We were um, there a month. For Mike's birthday, we drank it. You all right, mother? We did drink the bookbinder for Mike's birthday. Good memory. Uh, so what questions does anyone have on the greeter, um, on the wine club? Scout and circle. Maybe I'm going <laughs> to. Or scout and seller. I'm going to get away from this. Becoming a consultant. Anything. Anything. Yeah, yeah. Anything. You guys want to sell the wine? We never thought we'd actually sell the wine, but now we are obsessed with selling the wine because it's yeah. so delicious. I have to share it with people. It's so good. Yeah. Can you, can, you, can you see the cat? Poor lighting. Oh no, let's sit over here. Let's just turn it this way. I'm just gonna hold it. Hey, we'll hang out a few more. Where's our wine? Go see our wine. Oh shoot. We'll hang out a few more minutes if anyone has any Watch questions. Watch out. I always look at the Watch out. I always look at the camera. Whatever. I huh. think he's an expert now. He's done 17 tasting videos. That's not it. You go to FaceTime. I read the comments. It's called interacting. I wish Callie was on here. I wonder what she's up to. We are not. You're homie. I know that you love the bookbinder, but what's your favorite thing about it? The bookbinder <clears throat> apprentice, sorry. And then whoever else. I'm see. shocked with that bookbinder. Mom, what is your favorite? Um, what is your favorite Scout and Cellar wine that you've had so far? I wonder what everyone's favorite. Let's, let's, <coughs> let's, let's, let's play a game. What's everyone's favorite wine? Yeah, let's from do that. Scout and Cellar. You go first. I don't. I gotta think about it. Oh God. Favorite red and favorite white from last since we started the night. Fa oh God. Um, my favorite red so far has been the Hushkeeper 
um, red blend. Really? Yeah. Why? The boysenberry that's in it. I've never had it in a wine before. And it's super bold, it's very, very dry, super full body. Um, and it, as far as, <clears throat> I'm not talking about for everyday wine, but I'm talking about just my favorite one so far. I, I think that's been it. You know, Sharon put down their resident. The red blend is probably my favorite just any time wine. It's delicious. Um, although the Bookbinder's Apprentice is pretty good and it's that, it's that or Resident Red for my everyday. For the price and the then, Bookbinder's Apprentice <clears throat> gives. My favorite white, I, I gotta say, I think it's that Hushkeeper Pinot Gris. Really? Yeah. yeah, we just ordered more of that today. We ordered the um, new Bubbly. I'm so excited for that. I love yeah, it. Yeah, that would be cool. Actually, that Galvin Bubbly was really, really good. I'm surprised at how dry it was. It's, uh, it's really, really good. Tracy, are you Resident Red Blend? Rosé is great, yeah. The my mom likes the original. The Et Nico is pretty good too. Yes. If you like the sweeter stuff, I, I think that that'd be yeah. another. It actually has less sugar, I think. And now it has more sugar. But I think it's a little drier. It's not as fruity as the L'Original. To me, the L'Original has, it's so weird. The residual <coughs> sugar thing is so weird. The yeah, L'Original yeah. tastes sweeter, it's fruitier than the Et Nico, but it has way less sugar. The Et yeah. Nico has more. Yeah. Let's see what. Which rose, mom? <coughs> um, Leona says I like the dry and the smooth. It's amazing. Fieldhouse red blend. Ooh. Oh yeah, <clears throat> Leona ordered the Solar de Alma Malbec. I we haven't tried that one yet. I'm interested to see. How <coughs> it is. I think we have Can one. We get right? that one. I think we have one. Maybe. No, we might not. We have a couple Malbecs. I know we have that Vianti. That Vianti Malbec. Um, totally my cool. mom likes the L'Original, Tracy. The L'Original Rosé, and. So we, my mom and I accidentally got sent, instead of the original hours day, we got sent the original bubbly. And I would say it's probably even better, uh, but you can't get that one in Ohio. I think Leona, you can get it in Florida, so everyone needs to go to Florida. Yeah, see Leona lives in the good state where you can get all Everything. the wines. It's always sunny outside. <laughs> I know. You know? Can we all come live with you? <laughs> no mandated masks anywhere. It's like, great. Tracy says she's pleasantly surprised by the resident Pinot Noir. Yes. we. That's kind of one of our go-to. I love it. Yeah. It's a little bit pricier, but you're paying for something that's 100% Pinot Noir, yeah. where the wine <laughs> makers have really, um, they put a lot of thought into it, like a French, like the French um, Pinots. And <clears throat> is that the one where the grapes are from Willamette Valley? Morgan, yep. Cool. Yeah, Tracy, have you- um, really good. Have you had the Canto with hair Pinot, Tracy? I'm just curious what you think of it. I'm curious what you think of that one too, because between the, the resident Pinot um, Noir and the and the Cotte de la Terre, I'm I'm not sure which one I like better. I know. They're a little they're a little I bit. I think I like the resident, but <clears throat> Mom, did you did you say you like the Cotte de la Terre better? Fieldhouse White. Yes, that's our staple. We love that one. Yeah. It's a good. Not earmuffs, Mom. It's a good day drinking wine. No, like you're drinking the greeter. I want some of the greeter. <laughs> you smell that beans? I lost my train of thought. <laughs> Book by, oh, uh, Leona said she likes the book by her Apprentice better than the resident. I'm, I'm telling you, I'm, 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 you know, Okay, I'm Leona's putting it. her stake down. She's I like, get it. You can't. Can. That's fair. I mean, if we're 16 bucks a bottle. I know. You cannot find it And it's her. funny that how, how, I mean, think about that. Everybody's talking about what wines are, and they're all pointing to the 16 yeah. to $22 price point wines. Yeah. Um, it's just so great how you can. How much is this one? 22 bucks. <clears throat> it was crazy inexpensive. Like I was shocked bucks. by Becky. Um. So um, actually, a lot of Becky asked if um, are all the wines on Scout and Cellar small batches made by wineries who can't market for themselves. So some of them do have their own um, wine labels, and what they do is Scout and Cellar basically goes in and they partner with them on a different wine. So they'll make something. Hey Becky, hello. You haven't tried the wines yet. We gotta but get you hooked up. They with them. are all. They're all small, small family-owned producers. Mm -hmm. They're all biodynamically grown grapes. <laughs> all the bottle, like all the grapes for all the bottles are hand picked. They're all hand crushed. They're all mm -hmm. everything is done by hand, yeah. and it really, really shines through with all the wines. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Um, so yeah, a, a lot of them do good actually question. produce some of their own things. Yeah, some of them question. don't. Um, some of them are you know just specifically producing for Scout and Cellar now, like the private label. Um, because Scout and Cellar makes their own labels. <clears throat> the labels are all right. Scout and Cellar. Uh, but yeah, they're all small vineyards. Um, many of them do have tasting rooms and do do their own thing. Right. Um, my mom says, oh, mom, you have had resident Pinot. Did, did yeah. you have it on our trip? Yeah, or? she, mm, yeah, we did have it on the trip. That's, 
Yeah, sure. We had that on the trip. That was the one that came in Kate and mine's high-end tasting set that we got. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> yeah. No, that was the middle Jane cab. Yeah, it was the middle Jane cab. It was also the book binder. It was she, the Pinot, the resident Pinot, and the resident. No, uh, it's not the liqueur Pinot, which she had in her wine club. Um, she shared, she shared that with us when, it, when we came to visit. I disagree. Um, you've had the resident Pinot. Mine. I could be wrong. I, I thought we had it while we were there. I'm telling you, we had it when we were there. Mom liked the resident Pinot better than Conte Liqueur. Yeah. Okay, that's cool. So Conte I only Liqueur, had the Conte Liqueur once, so I can't know, really, I can't really speak to, to knowing it so much. From, I've had the resident Pinot at least three times now, so I've got to get the Conte Liqueur another taste. I mean, they're both phenomenal. And yeah. like Tracy said, 100% Pinot is very, very difficult to come by. You don't see that very often. No, you don't. And if you do, it's expensive. I, I don't know if you, if you traditionally, most people drink, <clears throat> you know, Mayomi is a huge one. A lot of Rodney Strong Pinot Noirs are out there. They're all blended. Becky, lo- what do you like to taste? Like, what do you like to drink? Seventy percent Pinot, and the rest is blended with a Merlot or a Cab, traditionally. Yeah, yeah. And that's what gets in that full body. Yeah. I think a lot of people are like, "Oh, I like Pinot," but then they taste the Scout Seven, and they're like, "This, this is, is very, a lot lighter." Than yeah. Um, a hundred percent Pinot is a very light. Right. Um, how does the shipping hold up in Arizona? So, yes, oh, Becky. Nice. Um, yeah, look at you with all the questions. What do you like to drink too, by the way? Yeah. Um, so right now in the summer. And actually, they're out of Texas, so you're close by, so it'll right. ship quickly. In the summertime, they do something called Scout Safe Ship, which basically means that they package everything in, um, like, insulated packaging. Yeah, so bottles, although they can break, it's extremely, <laughs> extremely rare. And if they do, they'll send you new ones. Correct. Uh, and then they put ice packs in that yeah. aren't designed to be frozen when they arrive at your house. Becky likes wine. And they're not, they're not meant to be... You're in the right place. Yeah, they're not meant to be, like, to keep the wines cool. They're just to make sure they don't get hot. Yeah. And, and when you get your first package, you can look back at the group where we open up our our wine um, our wine club and, and we show all the packaging in there. It's insane. It is super, yeah. super, super insulated. Yeah, Leona, where, <laughs> Leona's like, wine. Um, <laughs> although Leona likes red. <clears throat> uh, yeah, so it, the, in Arizona, what will happen, and then if you're not home, like, typically what will happen is the first delivery FedEx wants a signature, and then after that, they're like, okay, we know, you know, yeah. we live here. Like, if you, if you get orders a lot, and they'll just leave it, and it can sit out for 24 hours, even in the hot, with that insulation. So, mm-hmm. um, again, they're designed to keep the wines from getting too hot. Wine's very resilient. Um, yes, the pa- they put, and that's why they charge for shipping in the summertime. Now, in September through, when does Scout Station shipping start? June? I, I think it's, I think it's May. Okay. So, like, all spring, summer, and fall, or spring, fall, and winter. Yeah. Um, <laughs> 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 That's funny. All spring, fall, and winter, it's at <clears throat> over $99 free shipping. In the summertime, though, that's how you pay for shipping because they put an insane amount of And numbers. still, it's only like yeah. 15 bucks. So it you're, comes down like you're not a talking dollar about, bottle. Yeah, you're not talking about a big shipping yeah. cost. And if you don't want to pay shipping, <laughs> my mom, they just leave it at her house. Yep. I shipped a bunch <laughs> there, and I think we were there for a week, and we got six. It's six cases. It was funny. Six, so, and not they weren't all ours. Some were yeah, yeah, some were Sharon's. And yeah. It was just funny. Every day, the guy... By day four, he didn't ring the door, but nope, like, just these people. It. <laughs> and it says Scout and Cellar Wine on the outside for those of you who haven't received the package. So, um, But yes, Becky, they'll, it's all protected, so you're good. And if you don't want to pay shipping in the summer, Wine Club's the way to go. Um, wine Club doesn't charge any shipping. And what I would recommend you do is order your Wine Club and then use your 10% um, off coupon. Off and you're gonna, yep, yeah. And that basically covers the <clears> shipping. Well, it'll, it'll do more than that. It'll cover the shipping, the tax, and you'll still get because <clears> with a case, we did the math. When you when you order a case and you get your ten percent discount, even with the Scout Safe Ship, it covers the cost of the shipping. It covers the taxes. So with the extra ten percent, you're going to get another ten percent basically off the rest of your order, and it's going to it's going to work out really really nice. Yeah. So yeah. do do the wine club. You get access to all the Scout Circle exclusive wines, which we've been enjoying a lot of them lately. Yeah. I this this one, the, 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 the Nest Savignon Blanc yes. is another one. I agree over every one of them. Yeah. And the other thing is, if you just want that 10% off coupon, you can do the $89. Right. Um, and you can do quarterly. Like, yeah. if you really, although I wouldn't do quarterly just because there's so many good Scout, sa- 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 Scout Circle wines. Okay. So one thing about Scout Safe Ship. I wouldn't sure what you were saying. But yeah, the wine club, $89 for a bottle. It's like, what, $22 a bottle? I mean, that's. For what? For Scout Circle. I think it comes out to be 24 bucks a bottle. For the eighty-nine dollar one, it's gonna be less. Eighty-nine for four. Yeah, I mean, I my math are bad, so 
twenty three dollars. Yeah, twenty three bucks. Yeah. Yeah, Tracy, your picture. I love the picture you posted of your wines and the packaging. Mm. They do a really good job. Yeah, we're we're very grateful for everything that Scout and Cellar does for us. And I don't know. <coughs> yes, wine trip to Scout and Cellar when the air clears. Heck yes. How many wine clubs are too many? Um, Becky, you, I always tell people how many bottles of wine you drink a month. That's how many bottles of wine you should get. So we do the we do the six, and we also order wine. So if you're already in a couple wine clubs, just look at how many you're ordering, and then get rid of the ones that you are like, well, Scout and Cellar's better, which is probably gonna be all of them. We've had a lot of people convert that they're wine club members. They've done Scout and Cellar to kind of, you know, test it out for connection. Oh, okay, we're back. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. And again, when you think of the health benefits of drinking higher quality wines, less pesticides, less chemicals, less sugar, all of that. All sustainable. Hey, Jamie. Yeah, and it's, it's. What kind of wine do you like to drink, Jamie? And it, it's just crazy. Um, and how much better you feel. You know. Like Tracy, weren't you saying that? Like you feel you better, just, you have less sugar craving? You just took the words out of my mouth. <laughs> you just took it, you just took the words out of my mouth. I mean, that's the, I talk about it all the time. I, I mean, and sharing with her, you know, all the, the headaches that I get from, from, you know, drinking wines that have a lot of sugar and stuff in them. And yeah. I have not, I've yet to get a headache drinking, drinking yeah. Scout and Cellar wines. It's because of the, how clean they are. I mean, I've, I've said it many times drinking yeah. these. They taste very, very clean. They're very well done. They just seem very elegant when you drink them. And I, I drink, like, we drink nice wine. Yeah. And, you know, before this, it's not, you know, we were drinking high quality stuff, and, and this, I don't even touch them now. This is my go to no matter what. We're gifting the rest of our wine rack. It's pretty funny. Um, Becky says you can do a trip to Scout and Cellar. I, I don't know. I, we, I mean, we could try. <laughs> we're going to earn one, that's for sure. <laughs> Um, well, I was going to say something else. Oh, I don't advise anyone do this. Can I have two glasses with cake? Yes, Leona. You got to pre plan your day. But it's much <laughs> I lower. forgot she's one of your clients. That's funny. It's much lower in sugar <clears throat> and carbs. You can have it on a low carb day. Um, Tracy says you don't get the food cravings, no spike in blood sugar. Yes, that is true. Yeah. Um, and, when, and the other thing, too, talking about the sugar, we've mentioned this when talking about food when you're drinking, you know, when you eat a lot or, or when you eat during the day and sometimes you feel very, very sleepy. Yeah. It's because of the sugar that makes you sleepy. And a lot of times dr drinking a glass of wine at, you know, one o'clock on, on a week, it'll make you kind of tired because all the sugar in there, you don't, you just don't, don't deal with it. Another thing for mom, cover your ears, but I don't advise people do this, but um, I think, what was it, Monday? Two hours? Oh, no. I went to uh, one of my friend's houses who orders a lot of wine, and she was like, hey, let's open a bottle. So we opened one of the whites, we ordered uh, Adeline Tay Chardonnay, Chardonnay, and we drank it at lunch. <laughs> and I'm telling you, like, usually go right to sleep. Like, you can't function the rest of the day. I came home, and I was like, Rick fired up, ready to go. I, I was like, I gotta get out of here. This is crazy. I got a ton of work done. Like, no, you know, I mean, it didn't even put a dent in my, like, productivity. Energy, yeah. yeah, I felt great, and I wouldn't do it probably most Mondays. But, um, yeah, it's it's one of those wines that you just feel really good. Yeah, Leona, see? Cheers to you. So What'd if you, you are gonna, nothing wrong with that. See? Oh. Are you? No, I can't see it. I can use glasses, yeah. My mom goes <laughs> <laughs> oh mom you've done it i know you've had lunch wine <clears throat> wine at lunch um i've seen it i know i am in key west well i was on vacation i was working driving the bus so. well our life's vacation but bottom line is you can drink the wine it doesn't affect you yeah who else is on here what kind of wine do you guys like to drink this is fun yeah this is fun so we what what wine should we pair our next Dish. Yeah, what would you guys like to see us do? What wine? Give us a wine. We'll pair a dish. I know, I need to scroll down. I just want to put the comments. Don't flip it. Okay. My mom's winking. See, she <laughs> knows it. You know, she created, she created me. <laughs> she created me. <laughs> All the good and bad, mom. That is pretty funny. <laughs> no, you're not supposed to say the bad. Oh. All the good, mom. You created Nala. Definitely all the bad. <laughs> I did all the bad. What are you doing? I'm about to sit you out on your um, leash. My mom says Pinot. Which Pinot? The resident Pinot? You want the resident? Want Do you the want the, the yeah. Facilitator. She's on her, on her iPad though. Let's give her credits. <laughs> it's a little more difficult for her to type on there. Um, I what other Pinots? We have the Middle Jane. Ooh. Middle Jane Pinot? Ooh. We definitely haven't had that. Yeah. My mom goes, whatever. <coughs> whatever Pinot or whatever your mom I think is. it's whatever Pinot, honey. <laughs> yeah, we have a middle Jane Pinot that we've been holding on to. 
I don't believe you. Yes, you do. It's on, in the peanut section. I organize them all by varietal. Oh. Light is the heaviest. Come on. Um, who here has a wine rack? Does anyone have a wine rack at home? Middle Jane Pinot Noir, Willamette Valley, 2018. We must have had this for a while. It's got cat fur on it, dust, just the way I like it. I do all the wine ordering, so Mike has it. Does, is it near? Does this look backward? It is backward. Yeah, but it can't Tracy be. has a wine rack. Yay! Love it. Ooh, <laughs> I kind of like this one here. Look at the back of the label. Well, chill, chill. Let, me, oh. let me look at it. Don't rip it out of my hand. Oh, yeah, Leona, we talked about it. Ikea. So I'll have to show you all our wine rack. We got an Ikea. They stack. I can't flip it around. Oh, yeah, I can. Yeah. Well, I'm not going to move it because I don't... Oh, well, I guess I got to move it. So we bought Ikea, and you can see the one on the very far right. That's what they look like, and then we put a top on it. So anyone who needs a fun wine rack. Yeah. Well, yeah, when I I screwed in the top. <laughs> well, love that. Becky, I like you. You need to hang out on our Ooh, live board. Damn it. <laughs> I wasn't going to say it because my mom's on here. <laughs> Damn it, Will Amit. Where are you? Oh, Will Amit. Yeah, it's just it's just tough to force myself to say that because you know I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna put I'm gonna throw this out there. This is gonna sound weird. <laughs> I'm gonna throw this out there. It's not oregano, it's oregano. And just think about how you say Oregon, oregano, that's how it's supposed to be, but nobody ever says oregano, they say oregano because it's just a lot easier to say. So I can't say Will Amit. I just can't, haven't brought myself to start saying Will Amit yet. But you're right, it does rhyme with damn it. All right, Becky, we need to get you a, we got to pick out some wines for you to try. Oh, yeah. I think sure. you're going to fit she's in. A, she's in Arizona? Fit in here just like, fine. It's perfect. It'll ship straight to your door. Becky, fun fact, I always wanted to live in Arizona when I was little. Scottsdale? You want to go? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I like Sedona. Where are you at in Arizona, Becky? Tracy has a hard time keeping it full. See, Tracy, we can't seem to clear off the... Well, Tracy, I've got, I've got probably the easiest solution for you. You just text us. We'll set you up with about a four case order, <laughs> and when they come in, your Build your rack will be nice and well, nice and. She's in near Scottsdale, Phoenix, yeah. PH. I've never yeah, been Phoenix. Phoenix. Okay. Cool. I like Phoenix. Mom, yeah. you've been to Phoenix a bunch, haven't you? Yes. All right. Do you have a bestie in Phoenix? Or all right, Phoenix? Tracy, we got you. <laughs> <clears throat> Full. We gotta love Scottsdale. Yay! Y'all, we need to just like plan trips to everybody. Everyone lives in cool places. We, hey, if you guys ever want to do a live a live tasting with some friends and stuff, message us. I mean, yeah. I, I would love to, you know, any, Leona, you want to set up, you know, bring 20 people or so, and you want to set up a live tasting where they can they can try the wines and order some, like, I would totally, Kate and me will come down, and we'll, we'll set it up, and same thing with, with Becky and whoever else wants to do it. Yeah, we'll not Sharon, yeah. no, she's not too into it. We'll just, we'll just drink with her. Working or not. Huh? Working on it. Oh yeah, yeah. Working on it. Awesome. yeah. Get some, so get some friends. Yeah, that'd be great. We we love to do that. We put a whole thing together. And Becky that'd be a blast. Leona, How much fun would that be? Becky and Leona, if you want us to come visit in the winter, mm -hmm. we're happy to. Mom, I've been all over Arizona. Yeah, I know. I told you I wanted to live there when I was little. Sedona would be like is a Sedona. good. Sedona's got a lot of hiking. We did Sedona when we were little. That'd we did be... Scottsdale. We did. Um, Mom, where else did we go? I've been to Phoenix. Scottsdale. Scottsdale's got a lot of golf courses. I wanna. I wanna go there. Leona says, come on down. Wine is meant to be shared. Yeah, we share yep. it. It's, it. It's like food. Like, my philosophy in life is that, like, all the best things occur around food. And, you know, that's why whenever I teach my clients, like, you got to eat. you got to eat healthy, yeah. delicious food. But you can't, like, give up the things you love. Yeah, that's I, do like about stuff. I do like the, the way that you handle yeah. all the food I stuff mean, because we eat real food. Yep. It's not like, Mike, eat these three hard-boiled eggs and this unskinned or this, you know, completely skinned little piece of chicken and, and that's your lunch to lose weight. It's like, no, yeah. you force feed me a bunch of food yeah. and it gets my metabolism going. Good food. But yeah. yeah, that's how I feel about wine too. It's just like all the like fun memories we have, right mom? A lot of them have been around a good bottle of wine. Yeah. And I think you buy really good wine and enjoy the crap out of it. And, and these are so reasonably yeah. priced for what you're getting. I mean, come on. I think this one's 42 as well. All the Pinots are in the 40s just because they're so... Well, the, the resin's 35. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, so they're, I mean, that's the only pricier ones, but again, you get what you pay for with Scott and Seller. Like, if you buy the book binder, you're going to get... Yeah. Like... High quality. It drinks, like, like better than Caymus. It better than so a lot of your, like... I personally think it's way better than Caymus. Yeah. 
But I mean, we've had Camus, Silver Oak, you know, you're talking about Groff, you're talking mm-hmm. about all those wines, and now that I think back, yeah, or, says got a or, I drink them, soon. or I drink them right, now. Yeah, oh, share, so share a picture of your, your glass of wine with your pool party yeah. in the background, please. In the group. But, <laughs> going back and drinking those now, like, all I do is taste yeah. it, where I thought it was, like, really, really tannic, it's really just all the stuff they put yeah. in it. And the oaks, the oaks will get to me. I've they had, like, like heavy oak wines, and now, like, I taste a, a so regular much. wine, and I'm like, ooh, all I taste is oak. Yeah. Too aggressive. It, it is very aggressive on an oak. Yeah. These, you just, the grape shines through, and it's just so fantastic. So, I think before this cod. <laughs> My mom says, going for a walk to burn off all this wine. All right. See you, Sharon. <laughs> Yeah, the, the, the ter- little terroir. 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 T e r r o i r. Yeah. And so. that's really the characteristics of the, yeah. where the the vines are grown. And another last thing we'll say about the you know all the Scotland Cellar wines is the vines are 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 about anywhere from twenty to fifty year old vines. Mm-hmm. So because they struggle to produce. Yeah. And with wine, I'm mean, sure a lot of you guys wineries you know this. Um, Okay. The more the wine struggles, the more the vine struggles, um, the better the wine. So a lot of Scotland Cellar wines, older wines produce, older vines produce less grapes. Yep. So, and it's more of a struggle. Yep. So. Cool. Well, this was so much fun. Yeah, it was Thank fun. Thank you guys I for hanging out with us. Yeah, I um, appreciate it. I think we're going to do it again. Maybe. We'll, we'll, we're going to try to get ahead of like letting you know, okay, here's what's coming up for the week. Um, but I think we're going to do it again. <laughs> 45 minutes of cardio to prepare for wine time with Kate and Mike. Let's go. That is the quote of that. And another client messaged me, I drank the whole bottle last night and didn't get a hangover. So those are our two um, best quotes of the day. It's just so great when you, you say that and, and, you know, I'm putting myself out on the limb saying, like, I, I, I'm pretty confident you could drink a good amount of this, you're not going to get a headache. Yeah. And then we hear people say, like, I felt great the yeah. next day. And it's, it's awesome. Yeah, we love it. Well, yeah. we love just making your guys' lives happier and healthier. Hey, next time and invite somebody on here. Yeah. Your friends um, have a watch party or something like just go on there and have a watch party with a family member that drinks wine, something like that, and tell them to tell them to hop on. And, and you know, Tracy will try and get some people for your for your tasting. Yep, and I think we're gonna do a Pinot Noir next time. We'll yeah, come middle Jane, I, 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 it's 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 that we're it's settled, we're, we're doing this middle Jane. I like every it. Thursday. I like start the, doing this yeah, if you're around fun. on Thursdays. It's fun. I mean, we cook dinner anyways and drink wine. I like the dress on this one, so <laughs> I'm wearing that dress. I can't pull off that dress. Yeah, Cute, right. But. Yeah, right. All right, y'all. Have Thanks for hanging night. out. Good bye. seeing you. Bye, Tracy. All right. Everybody. Bye, Becky. Becky, we're going to reach out to you and get you some good wine picks. And if you guys have any questions, how to order wine, wine club, anything wine, message us. Let us know. Um, we love you guys. We'll see you soon. Bye. I love the little faces that pop up. Bye-bye.